Can you create realistic looking stars with narrowband data? Until a few days ago, my answer was a clear no. But today, my answer is yes. And how you do that? This is what this video is all about, right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So grüß Sie miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So some of you might have seen this video in which I told you my secret to great stars, which is you have to shoot separate RGB stars. There's no way around. And since this video, I made this clear again and again and again. Whoever wanted to hear it, you need to shoot RGB stars. But when we look at the trend of the last few months, then everything got easier. We got Graxpert AI, we got the new BXT, we got so many great scripts and Quiff told us that we do not have to shoot darks anymore. And today I can tell you, you do not have to shoot RGB stars anymore. Now this is obviously because of me working tirelessly for weeks and weeks and weeks, 24 hours a day, burying myself into books, experimenting and at the end coming out with the perfect formula. I'm kidding. No, it is because of a guy named Bill. And he has an amazing website called Dark Matters Astrophotography, where he offers data for sale, which is just two quality levels up from what you can buy anywhere else. And I will talk more about that in another video. And I actually challenged him a lot about, Bill, you have to actually include RGB data. There is no way around. And so that's when he gave me this formula, which I will show you now and which will solve the issue about perfect narrowband stars, about having to do RGB stars once and forever. And I would like to extend a very big thank you to Bill for actually sharing this formula and for solving this issue for all of us. And now let's hop into Big Inside and let's have a look at it. Welcome to my computer. So what do we have here in Pix Insight? We have here stars. And these here, these are real RGB stars already finished processed. So blur exterminator, star exterminator, stretched. And as you can see, they look really, really nice, really, really colorful. So the question is, can we reproduce that without having RGB exposures? And that's what we're going to try now. And afterwards, we will compare them. So what we have to actually reproduce them are hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen exposures. They already cropped and they had a treatment with Grexpert, but otherwise nothing has been done yet on them. So the magic actually happens right now, because right now we're gonna combine them. And how we are doing that? We're opening pixel math. In pixel math, we have to change a few things. We go away from use a single RGB K expression. We need to have the channels separate. We're open here destination. We say create a new image, color space, RGB, not grayscale. Everything else we leave as it is. So now we have to enter the formulas and you find the formulas in the description below in the video. So we're gonna enter these formulas now. For red, we enter this here, 0.4 times HA plus 0.6 times S2. For green, we enter this here, 0.4 times O3 plus 0.3 times HA plus 0.3 times S2. And for blue, it's the easiest, it's simply O3. And that's all we have to do. We throw the triangle over one of the pictures and we're waiting. And here we go. And that's here our picture. Now at the moment the stars look pretty whitish, so we wonder did it even really work? We will see. Because the cool part is now, given that we actually have kind of recreated RGB, we can use SPCC on that picture. So let's do that right now. We have here SPCC, getting the right sensor, and then we throw that on here. And look at that. That looks actually not bad for that, that it's a, such a mix up. It's only here where we obviously deviate, 
But otherwise, look this here, the blue green curve, head on. So that's cool. So we can close this down, restretch it. Okay. So now, given that this is not a full tutorial, but we really just want to look at the stars, I will now run through the terminators, starting with BXT, the noise exterminator, and yes, most importantly, star exterminator. We need the star image. Remember, you never need to select on-screen stars when you exterminate from a linear picture. Okay, and here we have the stars. We do not need the horsey head anymore. And for the next step that I'm doing, I really want to give credit to Mr. Adam Block. Because until now, what I said is you should actually put this down dark and then do an arc sign stretch. But quite honestly, what actually Star Exterminator does here, it's most of the time hard to actually even completely match it. It just feels perfect. And Adam has recently in a video shown the perfect way how we can leave it exactly like this. And this is really cool. And if you have not seen this video, all you need is histogram transformation and screen transfer function. So what you're doing is you take here the tab and you throw it on the screen transfer function. And it's sometimes hard to see that it even anything happened, but it did. Then you take the triangle from the screen transfer function, throw it on the histogram transformation, and here you immediately see that something happened. And that's also a good indicator. If now nothing happened, this first step did not work, then you have to redo it. But if you see that the curve here changes, you know it's working. And now you take the triangle, so you make a full circle, and throw this again on the picture. Obviously it blows out now, but if I now take away here the auto stretch, look at this. Now it's stretched and it's exactly like before. So this is really absolutely cool. So big thank you to Adam for showing us that. Obviously we could now still a little bit saturate it more if we need, but I think this is actually looking pretty colorful. So we can actually do now the comparison. So these are now the stars. I think we already see their look pretty cool. They have some yellow in it. They don't look magenta. They don't look greenish. They're really nice stars and quite colorful actually. But still the question, can they match to RGB stars? And let's see, these are now our new synthetic stars, if you want to call it like this. And these are the RGB stars. Did you see any change? I mean, there's a little bit of change here with, with Alnitak, but that's not substantial. But if I look at it now, even here on my studio display, I see almost no change. Let's zoom in now. Again, here the synthetic stars, and here the real ones, or RGB. And again, obviously some stars pop up. But quite honestly, it makes no difference. And for example, if you look at that here, this star here, in the synthetic stars, it pops up nicely. In the RGB stars, it's almost not visible. But then, and that's funny enough, look at this star here. In the RGB, it pops up. And in the synthetic, it's not or almost not visible. So I think we can really, with a good conscience, state that thanks to this formula, Thanks to Bill, we do not need RGB stars. Now, if you want to have it 100% accurate, if you have the time, it's definitely still a good practice to do them. But for any case where out of whatever reasons you do not have your RGB stars, this is a, at least almost as good possibility how to get stars. So I hope you are as excited as I am about this new trick. And if you want to always to belong to the first to hear about things like that, plus any other tips or tricks which I do not create a video about, please subscribe to my Patreon channel and be part of our family over there. Link is in the description below. See you next time and clear skies.